and guys I just read the instructions and I think I walked it wrong no 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 we're fine we're fine I was reading instruction number 11 which said take the yarn under and I was thinking you mean the second slot is supposed to be under but no no number 10 is the second slot and it's an over I was about to say I think I just walked it back to front and was like isn't that the you know theme of the day but no <laughs> All right, now we're on to instruction number 12, which says cut the last thread at the back of the loom and tie it to the warp stick. And we've clearly done that with a detour or three. And now um, if you are warping with somebody else, which would be nice, um, you can follow the following instructions. Sort of you're using your warp peg, so a bit, a distance from the warping peg, you tie some spare yarn around it and tie it firmly. And then you chop the ends, you take it off, the warping peg and you snip the end so and then go on and do other things but since we don't have that I have to follow the instructions from the website which I've conveniently got on the iPad and it says solo warping I'll put a link in the description as well I think I said that before but it's worth saying again okay actually I need that up closer Losing my mind. I think we can put the hook away. Solo warping. Okay. Now we follow the instructions until we've tied the last warp thread onto the back warp stick, which we've done. Keeping tension on the loom, lift the warp from the warping peg and place your right hand through the yarn loops. Can I put my left hand through the yarn loops? I mean, I am doing it on the opposite side of the table. Um, twist the threads around your hand, maintaining an even firm tension until you reach the front roller. Okay, it's the front roller. Okay. Let's give this a go. Okay, so we put our hand in it. like I'm screwing it up already. <sighs> okay, so we put our hand through it and then you just basically roll it around, which looks absolutely delightful on my hand. Take the threads over the reed so we're... Whoa, that, that went interesting. This is probably why you do it in your right hand. Whatever. Can we just see? We'll scoot around this way. There we go. That's a bit easier. Okay, so we folded it over, maintaining even tension. Stand at the back of the loom. Okay, I'm there. Turn the back handle towards you. This is probably why you need it in the right hand, because I'm kind of stuck now, aren't I? Allow the threads to pass through your hand. Wind until the back warp stick goes round the roller once. Okay, so it's here. So when it goes back round and hits us here, we stop, right? Okay, we're just going to be very naughty indeed and um, un unwind. Okay, let's get it round the right hand, maintaining even tension. That's not very even, who cares? Okay, we wind the back roller. Let's double check that. The back handle towards you, allowing the threads to pass through your hand. Okay. Oh, I see. Because the roller's rolling it this way, so the threads are going that way through through the heddle. So we've just got to let it do its thing and then wait for a full revolution. Okay. Okay. I think we're back where we were because it's kind of here now and that's where we were right okay that's fine insert oh bugger 
I should have read through these all before I started. Okay, I need my cardboard box. Sorry, sorry. Abandonment. Okay, so, in general, the idea... Let me see if I can find it again. Phew! Okay, let's do this again. So you put your hand through, and then you wind, wind, wind. Not particularly evenly, but hey. Right, we've got our cardboard sticks. And the point is, we make one revolution, and we put it here. But then how do we continue holding on? The full width of the loom. Okay, but does it say put it through the threads? Or is it just hold it so the threads don't get tangled? That's an excellent question. Let's give it a go. Oh, it wants to fall out already. Actually, having the entire warp dangle like this is actually enough tension. So, wait for it to come back around. Put in another stick and just hope to God it doesn't tangle too badly. <sighs> looking a bit funky but it's coming through the heddles perfectly sorted so okay this is easier than I thought uh -huh. she says touch wood okay. that's looking okay okay we're back to that position so we've put in about three cardboard sticks now so I presume we're putting them in the same place. So when it comes back around to the roller, you insert another one. Because if not, well, then I've got no clue. This is fine. We're fine. It's looking really pretty though. It's like beautiful lollipop. Right, stop winding once the yarn loops reach the front of the loom. Okay, so every now and then I've got to measure and see when the end of the loop is here. I've still got a bit. Okay. Alright, we'll do another revolution and then we'll measure. This is really tense. I've got to support my read. And no, I think we've got at least another full revolution to go through. After this next one, we'll come on, little, little, little read. You can do it. Do you guys think that's good enough? I mean, it's it's reaching. Let's see what the photo says. The photos less, but. Good to have too much or too little because theirs looks quite short. Alright, we'll do one more. We'll do one more. I think it's shorter than it's supposed to be, but I made the decision to do this. I'm sticking with it. Okay, the last instruction, now that I've made it too short. Stop winding once they reach the front of the loom. Well, they almost touch. I mean, eh? Cut through the yarn loops. Unclamp the loom, and then we follow the rest of it to thread the reed, which is the comb bit. So I believe for this one, we'll have a look in the booklet in a minute, but we threaded all the yarn through the slots. Now we thread them through the heddles, I believe is the general point. Okay, so we need to cut it. Okay, we've got two yarn sticks left over. Excellent, cardboard sticks. Okay. Okay. All right, um, just snip. <laughs> I feel like 
like we should something else. So first we'll just sort out the art loops. I think that's the best policy. And you can see that the tension's a bit uneven because we've gotten to the end of this and it's a bit uneven, but that's okay. I think as long as we've only got the unevenness in in the actual loops, I think we're good actually. I'm gonna get another knitting needle. Okay, so we'll just thread and then we'll snip and then we'll move on. At least we would if we could thread them in the correct order. Then we got two more pink. There we go. And then we got all the ten pinks in the middle. Since we did let it go, it has gotten a little bunched and loose, but that was for the greater good. I don't have three hands, and none of us have three hands, you know. It isn't a great look on a human, or anyone really. Okay, that's a bit more bunchy, but that's okay. And you can see the very the very first loops that we just redid are very loose because the tension just isn't what it should be but that's okay All right let's do this are we ready i'm not ready okay we're gonna scoop 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 oh and we're gonna just let them fall off is that what we're doing no, that doesn't seem right either. There we go. We'll just go snip. And then we'll go snip. Hooray! Okay, that's done. Oh my god. Now, unclamp. Put that in the wrong spot. Right, now we unclamp. No, not re-clamp, re -clamp. How are you feeling? Oh, there we go. Whew. All right. That was a big job. For the next little bit, I think I get to do other things. Okay, now this is just going through it if you had a friend to one. Okay, step number 18. We're using the small end of the hook instead of the big. And I believe we're working from the back of the limb. Now it says, um, all right, we're starting at the back of the limb. We're starting here. So. We'll turn it, we'll do it from here, and then we'll see how we go. That might be a good idea. Actually, I'll sit here and we can... We can work it out from here. It's saying lift the first two threads on the left but it's starting from the right. Okay, <laughs> that's helpful. To the top of the slot, look behind the reed and gently pull one thread out of the slot. 
Is it the top thread? It just has one thread. Use a threading hook to pull this thread through the eye to the left of the slot. Okay, so in each slot we've got two threads. I'm not entirely sure which way we're working at this point. Well, I've got our bead. So it seems like we're facing the back of the machine, yes? And someone else is at the front. Okay. Wouldn't it be better than that we have the front face? Oh. It's really difficult to follow when this is from the point of trying to educate you on things. Oh, there we go. The left. So now we have the machine facing us. And we're going to start at the left and go along. Now, as mentioned before, all the heddles, we've got 37 heddles, not 36. So, if we go to the left, then this one will be left over at the end. We won't be using it. Well, that's good. That's, we wanted to answer that question. Okay, now, all it says is one slot. So, one thread, sorry, not one slot. I must presume that it is the top thread they're talking about that we can hook through. So we use a small bit. We lift that up to the top, because that seems to be the point. Okay, and then we plonk that through. It's supposed to go up to the top. Oh dear, this is going to be challenging. Well, why don't you just lift up one of the threads? That way you can catch it. Maybe this is why you work from the back of the machine. Oh dear. It's a good thing there's only 36 of them. Is it supposed to be on to tension? How are we supposed to loop it? Aha! It just takes a little doing. Right, as you can see, we've got one through the heddle. We've got one still in the slot. It's to the left. So we're just going to plonk it there. I think further along we have to tie these into small grooves. Where was I? Oh yeah, small hook. All right, so we... I'm not sure the best way to do this, but it seems really hard from any, any side, whether I turn it around or what. There we go. It seems if you leave it a bit slack, it does pop through. Okay, so I might do four of these and then knot them because it says that's what we do. Um, divide them into small groups and take a group of threads over and around the front warp stick. So it's going over and then under. And then we divide it into two. What? Oh, you divide the group of strands into two. And then you tie it across the top of our lovely stick thing to hold it in place. Okay, so this has been tied at the back, as we can see, and it's all rolled up, so it's perfect. So now we've got to do it this way. But is the front warp stick, is it, is it this way or is it supposed to be facing inwards? This is the question. I mean, that picture seems to have it as though... The tires are facing inward towards oh sorry towards our reed it's really hard to know okay moving on let's try to thread some more of these oh, little end for it little end okay so we poke it through the heddle really worries me that the reed moves this much it's like is this stable Okay, three to the side, we will. You've really got to be able to like section out your threads. Imagine if this was all one colour. Oh, that would be bad. It seems putting it through the heddle at an angle means you can grab the thread from the right. So that's useful. Alright, so we've got eight strands. Um Divided in two because we've got to put them. Wait. We'll just put that under. Okay. Right. Right. So it's under. Now, what was the instructions? Divide them into small groups. Take a group of threads over. No, over and around. Okay. 
Sorry, I was about to do it under and around. That's not correct at all. Oh, and I missed one. Come back. Come with the group. Nobody gets left behind. Right, this may be a problem. <laughs> oh no, we've got it long enough. This is why you cut it when it reaches the front of the loom, so you have enough to tie off. But this is seeming okay. <laughs> and then you do a simple single knot on the top. You divide it into two, and then you tie it like that. Well, maybe I should have done this after I threaded. I think I should thread all of them and then start with this because otherwise I won't be able to reach properly but that's okay we can we've experimented we can do that so I'm going to do groups of four because it's 36 Are you going to come through? Yes, good. Okay, and then you just put it through, take the next one. Okay, right, we've got the two blue done. <sighs> this is faster than warping. Sort of. into this day I thought it would take a while I didn't I didn't realize it would take this long so it's it's proof that doing something for the first time it's usually the longest isn't it because you're learning and you're making mistakes and it all just goes but it's good and we problem solved so I'm very pleased about that It's a very handy skill to have, to be able to look at something and go, all right, we'll fix this, rather than giving it up or just freaking out. I mean, obviously there is some freaking out, but, you know, after the freak out, you go ahead and fix things. Right, next step, we'll put them into groups. So, we've got 36, so I will put them into groups. Into small groups, that is. Alright, so. No, it's over and then under, isn't it? I keep going to do it under than over. I, I can function. Let's try to get that a bit smoother, shall we? Okay, so it's over then under. Divide it into two groups, and then we do a simple flat knot on top. And that's quite well held, that's a good tension. Next one we'll do two blue, two pink. What you done wrong? You keep going under. Okay, they go under, they split up, they come back across the top. Okay. Oh, that's kind of pretty. Now we've got two, 
four, six, and we got a blue. Take that blue. Go over. And then under. This one's a bit tight. I probably shouldn't have done that last revolution. On the back. That's okay though. We will make this work. We may just have to be a bit firm about it. Okay, I think it. How many of these do we want? I want two, four. Yeah, you can definitely see where the tension changed all the looser ends. Okay, so we go uh, over, then under, come back around, do a flat knot on top. And hopefully there's enough. Oh yeah, it's, uh, there we go. Okay, so that's the first half done. Now we'll go and do the second half more, because again, we see the ties in the middle, which understand why it's there. It does seem to get in the way a whole lot, though. Which is deeply irritating. Now go over, over. Let's go under. Should I divide you up? Let me go over. And I've lost you again. That's okay. these hold. Oh, so we want one, two, one, two, yep, 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 yep. Over. Split. Get out of there. Just squidge that together a bit more. <sighs> okay, over. Split roughly into two. I don't think I'm bothering to count anymore. There we are. There we go. One, two, three, four. Did I? This one. Oh, that one. I think I put five in. <laughs> okay, so this one is five. This one's only going to three. I thought, <gasps> what have I missed? And it's like, no, no, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah. Last one. Over, split, tie around. Come on, tie around, I said. How's that looking? Nice and firm. We'll just even it out a bit. Yeah, it's very firm, but it's not straining that. And seemingly in photo 21, that seems very much to be... It's like it strains at full capacity, so that makes sense. All right, check the knots. It said they're folded inwards. So. Is that correct? Man, I hope. Check the tension. I mean, tension is looking good. Look at that. It's looking very fine. I hope you guys can see. Yep, there's the finished warp tied on. Okay, so we got there, and now we're going here. Check the tension, yes. Tie the second half of the knots using a half bow tie to secure. Uh, I don't think I have enough there. Nor do I know how to do a half bow tie. 
I don't know, it should be pretty, pretty okay as it is. I should be doing a half bow tie. What is a half bow tie? I think you're pulling one loop through part of it, but I simply don't have the ends to do this. So we're going to forge ahead. These should be pretty firm. Um, they're holding up nicely. And if I need to tighten a bit as I go along, hopefully it'll just play nicely. a little yeah that's pretty right now where was I half bow tie right ignoring that to advance the warp to the front roller release the tension on the warp wait what are we doing okay so it's on the sticks I think and then we're just rolling it back. What does it say? To advance the warp to the front roller, release the tension on the warp by turning the back handle away slightly and pull the pole out of the cog. Keeping tension on the back handle wind it towards you until it reaches the front roller and then we click the back pole down and retension of the warp okay okay so in essence warp is here we need it here i believe is the general thing until the front warp stick reaches the front roller now where precisely does the warp stick need to be i get seemingly Front warp stick should be on the top here. It should be balanced on the front roller. Okay. So, to do this, release the tension by turning this away slightly. Click up the pole. Oh, <laughs> it does work. And then keeping tension on the back handle. We roll it towards you, but it's facing away from me, so I'll pretend it's towards me. And we'll just let it, we'll let the back handle roll a bit because I feel sorry for my poor reed. I don't think it's really handling this so well. Okay. I think that's a good position. Okay. And now, oh, one of the cardboard fell out. And then we got a click. Oh, there we go. Okay, so the little metal pin that we saw last video, it's what you do. It's how you move the pole out of position. It clicks to the other side. But now that's clicked back in. All right, our tension's a bit wiggly. We've lost a, a, a cardboard stick. That's okay. You, as you can see, our warp is staying really nice. So it's a bit soft, though, so we need to crank it back a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. Why are you all spread on that side? I think there's more on that side. I also suspect that my loops are trying to make a break for it. Which is probably why you do the half bow tie, but do I have the stuff for that? No, I don't. So we're just gonna tighten them up. you think you are doing trying to come undone ah the shame the dishonor speaking of dishonor kind of hoping to see the new Mulan movie soon that is the plan just thinking Mushu dishonor on you dishonor on you oh dear <laughs> The reed moves! I forgot. Alright, we've cranked it back as far as we can go. That's nice and bouncy. Whoop, 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 whoop. Bit too bouncy. Where we can, we've managed to do some little knots that can be undone later. But some of them are just way too short, so we'll just keep an eye on that. Okay, there we are. Right. 
front warp stick has reached the front roller. We've tightened up that. The next step is spreading the warp, which is basically you take a loop of spare yarn and you put it into the, th the thread. Okay, we've got to move out the reed. Oh man, I hope this works. We've got everything. Oh, it does. And once everything's under tension, the reed doesn't move very much. Okay, I'm satisfied. Right, it's presently in the up position. Place the reed in the up weaving position. Insert a loop of scrap yarn from the right side of the loom, I mean right side of the warp, into the shed. Do not beat it with the loom, with the reed. Ugh, I'm so tired of just not even Englishing anymore. Alright, we don't have our shuffles set up yet, so I'll just cut across them. Hopefully not bang into anything. Okay. And we settle it a bit from the knots by the look of the picture. I just hope every every thread's nice and up. Oh no, that seems good. We've got space. There we go, that's a good test. Okay, we need you to be untwisted. Next page. Change the reed to the down weaving position. Insert a second loop into the shed, and then we've got to do it another time. So I'll, I'll snip some more off. Oh, scissors. Yeah, let's scrap yarn for a reason. Okay, change the reed to the down weaving position, which, as I believe, is like right, right down here on the floor. Okay, and then I have to like try my very, very hardest to, oh shit. I think this is opening the shed. I believe that's the whole point of this because otherwise it's just like, eh, 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 eh. What is it? Don't, don't hook any threads, just be chill, dude, be chill. Okay, so we've got all the ends of our little scrap yarn loops there. Then we repeat again in the up position. Okay, so take it out of down. Put it into up. <laughs> Getting more and more fraught with tension as we go along. How are we supposed to do this? I have no idea if it's even. There we go. Oh, look at that! Can you see it? I don't know if you can see it. It already looks a bit like weaving, like with the changing of the sheds from up to down to up, it's creating plain weave already with our silly bits of scrap. Okay, next stage, use the reed, so we take it out of up, to gently push the scrap yarn towards the knots until it's compressed, which means our warp threads will be evenly spread out. That's the whole point. It's about tension. This entire day is about tension. <sighs> okay, gently push. We really should have clamped this again. Okay, that seems to be as far as it wants to go. Okay. And then do we just put you back in neutral for a bit? How about we just leave you in neutral? Alright, we've got our lovely threads. Now you are ready to weave, it says. Hooray! So it's taken like three or four hours at this point. Oh my god. Wind the weft yarn onto the shuttle. Uh -huh. Pass the shuttle through the shed. Use the reed to gently push the first row of weaving down to the scrap yarn. Okay, we're supposed to put it for the next one. We have to put it in the down position, then the up position. 
afterwards. So we start with that in essence. But first we have to wind our shuttles. So we will go get them. I've got two lovely ones. I've also got a bigger one from my big loom, which um, I only need. I only have two little ones rather than three, and I've got three colours. So that's gonna be fun. No, we're starting with pink. So we'll take a little bit just to wind the yarn onto the shuttles, and then we'll get started. I think for this, I may have to write down a little pattern as we go. But I may start with 10 rows of pink, as it were, um, to start off the and end the scarf. That way it's got a little bit of something. And then we'll just go through the pattern as we do with the warp. But where, where did I put my book? I have no idea. Maybe I put it over there. Maybe it fell over. Aha! Uh -huh. It was cleverly disguised behind the other scans. All right. We'll dob out a rough pattern. We'll go pink. Pink ten. And then we'll start the pattern. Blue two. Pink two. Can I do gold one? Or does it have to be even? Because I've kind of just done the one gold. Well, that's tricky. What if I just doubled it then? Because I know I've done this pattern for them. How about I just double the amount of stripes? That means left ends to weave in. That could be a good thing. Yeah, I can see the problem now. I should have should have done two stripes. Hmm. Regret is fleeting. Okay. So we'll take that out and we'll just wind it on. Let's just wind this on to the first shuttle. Okay. Now how, about, how does it look when you... That shuttle is quite full actually. Okay, good. How do you keep it on the shuttle? Do you just... Willpower? Alright, I might stand up for this. I've been sitting too long. Okay, we've got our shovel. Maybe this so we can see it better. Would it be so bad if I just did one row of gold? I mean, it doesn't say I can't. It just means I'll be starting at another end. But that also means on both sides I'll have ends to weave in, so maybe that'll be a bit more even across the piece rather than little darned in ends along one edge of it. So no, maybe this isn't a disaster. Okay, I've never seen a rule against it, so, so well, let's give it a go then. Okay, guys, I might take a break. It's been a while. Um, I'll come back after lunch with the boat shuttles full, because I believe that's what they're called, boat shuttles. Or maybe just shuttles. Eh, I'm so tired and mixing it up. But yeah, I'll come back ready to start the weaving in a bit. So I will see you then, okay?